Hello and welcome, PML fans. I am your host, Admin Joe here, and with me I have Stuart, who is going to be helping me uh, talk about the free agent drops and pickups that some of our coaches have done this season already. Good day. Thanks for having me, Joe. Oh, yeah. Anytime, man. How you been? Yeah, not too bad. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Can't complain. Good weekend. Good weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All good right. to hear. Yeah, all right. So where do you want to start? We'll go ahead and start with the Chartreets, my team. All right, your team. Yeah. Okay, so you've made two uh, trades prior to round one. Yes, I your did. Your first one was Cantonian Executor to Slurpoff. Mm-hmm. And your second one was Dustin Ryder to Toxic Road. Yes. Uh, I think to start, we'll, um, I'll just think, what was your thinking behind the trades? And then I'll jump in and I'll give my thoughts after you've given me your vision. Okay. So a lot of it was um, I really wanted my f- Waterfire Grass Core, but I didn't see Alone and Executor really helping my team much. I mean, sorry, Cantonian Executor helping my team much. And um, I felt like having a Fairy Dragon Steel Core would be fit my team much better because uh, those, those, po- those types really handle my weaknesses pretty well. And then uh, Dust Noir I dropped because it was like a panic pick, so I just kind of picked that up. And I was looking at uh, Water Resist Pokemon, and I happened to remember that Toxicroak does have Dry Skin, so that'll help me with the powerful Water Pokemon that are in the league that I'm going to have to go up against. And also, he is a Fighting Poison type, which covers two typings I didn't have before. That's right, yeah. Right, so um, I definitely agree with you on the first one. The number one thing that gives your team is the fairy type. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that dragon immunity is worth the trade. I told you before, I don't think you'll ever bring Executor to a match, so losing the Psychic and Grass type coverage isn't huge for you. Mm-hmm. And you'll actually you, you actually use Slurpuff. I don't know how many rounds you'll bring him, but you know the pressure is going to be put on in the t- team builder. For your opponents, yeah, um, you know they've got the sweeping that sweeping potential of that Valley Drum Run Burden set is always going to be there. They might not even come, but you know you've got tech sticky webs if you need it for a particular week. Uh, you know it's lost a little bit thanks to the Superberry nerf, but you know it has Drain Punch so you can get health back if it needs it. But generally, if you're using Slip Off, it's going to be faster after an Unburden anyway. And unless you've got a strong sort of like Steel type or you know, some good priority, it's going to um, run through your team. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dust Noir trade, I totally agree with you. I think that, um, you know, you, yes, okay, you lose the, the ghost typing and you lose some defensive utility, but once again, I don't think you'd necessarily bring it to many matches. Um, the water is this, uh, the water immunity you bring with, you get with dry skin, fantastic. Um, the poison typing to absorb toxic spikes, you get knockoff user. Um, you know the utility of it being able to be run physically or specially. You know, sword dance, nasty plot, sucker punch, vacuum wave, priority on both sides. Mm-hmm. The speed tier, the speed tier is pretty good at 85, so you can also use Toxic Croak as a scarfer if you need to on a particular match. And all those things added together means you can slap it on pretty much any team. You don't need to build around it. It can be built. Um, you can use it with Last toys you can use it with Charizard, you can use it with any of those mines. And um, the only the biggest minus I can see is you lose a spin blocker, but you know that is what it is. What it is. Yeah. I prefer the first trade to the second one, but um, team balance works in both trades to me. So I don't think you've lost out. I think they're both good trades, and I look forward to seeing what you do with them. Awesome, man! I appreciate it. And then we can move on to the next team that uh, made some changes it's the la kings right so um the trade here was surfish to Gallade. yes i was genuinely surprised by this trade i um you know i gave this team an a plus in the draft analysis it's still a great team don't get me wrong but i personally really rate surfish i used them in the last league um i o coded the blade from full when i smacked it with a band of close combat um, you know, I used first impression every week. Brave Bird was great, especially when you Dynamax, it gives that max airstream. Scrappy mm-hmm. was really useful, but 
I can see where he's going with Gallade as far as like he's got his justified user. Um, he gains the psychic type without losing the fighting type. Um, it still has priority. Arguably not as strong, but still, you know, very useful. Um, far more officially defensive. Can take those hits better than Surfetched could. Mm-hmm. So it's also more it's also more versatile in the move sets that it can run. Um, you know, outside of Bandit, Surfetched is not as strong. Like you can run a Life Orb, so you get a bit more versatility. But you know, Gallade has a lot of different things it can do. Knockoff user as well. Um, it's way faster. Uh, it's added a Ghost and Dark Weakness, but there's no issue to that because it wasn't really one to start with on the team. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I can sort of I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do with it because. I can kind of see why he's changed to Gallade, but until we see it in action, can't really comment too much more. What do you think? Yeah, I was also surprised a little bit just from the lack of power uh, Gallade has compared to Surfetch. I mean, it's not a significant drop-off, but it's enough of a difference to make you wonder. But um, after talking to him for a little while, it did make a little sense, uh, a, a, lot, a little more sense, um, I should say whenever he was describing that uh, he wanted to be a little more unpredictable with some of the, with some mons he was bringing. And he felt like yep. surf edges could easily be countered where to Gallade, um, it make the opponent really think about what he's using that for. So it well, makes sense. Definitely, to a, fair me. Point. definitely well, a fair point. Yeah. So yeah, it's bad. I think he didn't make a bad trade at all. It, it was a pretty good trade. Yeah. It's a good trade. It's, uh, it's an interesting trade. All right, and then that brings us to the Rising Raichu's trade of Phalanx for a Lowland Persian. Right, so I just got to start with the fact that a Phalanx is absolutely hot garbage, absolute trash. <laughs> um, okay, it has Defiant, no retreat, first impression, but it's so weak that in almost all aspects it can't make use of these moves and abilities effectively. That's even after a no retreat. You know, this gets beaten down by neutral hits from average Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So to me, a Law and Persian is a huge upgrade. And of all the trades that are made prior to round one, this is my favorite. Um, you know, knock off, parting shot, fake out, switcheroo. You know, there's so many support options that Mon has for the team. It will allow all the other Pokemon on the team to perform their role better. Yeah. Whereas I don't think Phalanx did anything for the team as a fighting type. So losing the fighting type is no issue because it wasn't strong enough to do anything anyway, so you might as well allow other mons to be the offensive parts of the team and then use Persian to be the defensive part. I mean, yes, okay, it's weak to fighting types, and it adds a fighting weakness to a team that's already quite fighting weak, mm-hmm. but when you've got Pokemon like Togekiss and Zatu who resist, it's not a huge issue, and also a Lolan Persian has Fur Coat, which of course doubles the defense stat, which I'm pretty sure it's 60 to 120, I think. Yeah, which it allows doubles it, to, it completely. Yeah, which allows it to, um, you know, it can perform that support role much better. And who doesn't like a parting shot, Mon? And it's got, you know, a lot of um, other utility as well. So I'm excited for him to have made this trade. But I think it's a huge upgrade. Oh, yeah. I also think it was a better trade. I've tried using Phalanx, and Phalanx just isn't there. Where as a Lolan Persia, like you said, is very defensive utility and even offensive if you really want it to be with its high special That's attack. That's true. Yeah, N- nasty flop. Mm-hmm. And um, if he wants to, he can even uh, toxic stall, uh, make those turns last a little longer with fake out help. And, it's true. You know, yeah. There's just so many things that uh, a Lolan Persia brings to the tables that Phalanx could never do. And exactly, it, and you don't you don't know which one's going to turn up. Which oh, yeah. is always good. Like any pressure on the team builder, I always talk about it. Pressure on the team builder is just as good as pressure during the match because you never know what's going to turn up. Yeah, and um, you always got to expect parting shot, and there's really hardly anything you can do about it when it goes off. Exactly. So exactly right. It's never bad to have on your team. So that brings us to the next squad: is the Persian Prowlers who dropped right on for Espeon. So. I don't know if it was mentioned in the analysis video, but this team was very physically offensive. Like, there was a lot of physical Pokemon. I don't know if there was any special attacks, special attack users other than Mr. Ryan. Mm-hmm. So, giving it a fast special attack user is huge for this team. And 
by fast, it's second to only Persian on this team, base 110 for Espeon. Yeah. Um, and speak, speaking of parting shot before, Magic Balance is really useful. It's going to make opponents think twice about clicking status moves and other moves. Um, whereas Rhydon didn't have that. It, had, it was, you know, it needs a lot of help to set up and it's got that, those massive four times weaknesses. Yes, they lose a stealth rocker, but when you've got Shuckle, who's one of the best stealth rockers in the game as far as defensive utility is concerned, I don't think it's that much of a loss. Um, getting rid of those two four times weaknesses, I think it leaves Gyarados the only four times weakness on the team with Electric. I'm, yeah, I believe so. That, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, Espeon doesn't, isn't restricted to using Eviolite like Rhydon is, and it doesn't need a setup to do damage either. You just send it in on a slow them on and click one of its psychic or coverage moves and away you go. Yeah, I was surprised um, that he did pick right on uh, in the draft when he already got Shuckle. I think it was before. No, actually, that's probably what it was. He probably picked right on before Shuckle just to make sure he had a stealth rocker. And after he got Shuckle, I guess he realized he doesn't really need that extra rocker or bulky mon since he already has that in Shuckle. And he yeah. could uh, change that out for some offensive pressure, specifically special, since obviously, yes, he was lacking that. Yeah, and also, just like Toxic Hope for your team, I think he can just slap Espeon onto a team. Um, it can be, like, if he needs a sixth mon and he can't think of anything else, I might as well bring Espeon because it's got that magic bounce utility or it's got strong psychic moves that I can use. Um, so I think that helps as well. That helps as well. Oh, yeah, and it's certainly going to be a fun match uh, with him being my first opponent during the season, so we'll see how Espeon impacts the game to where uh, it would have been different if Rhydon was showing up. Yeah, well, once again, it's something you have to prepare for, and it's got that that massive that big jump in speed tier that he didn't really have. That, you know, you're not, even though you can bring Persian, regular Persian, and it's got some of the utility of a long Persian, it's mm-hmm. still not it's it's not as threatening. Whereas um, right on, you know that if you've got something faster than it, and it's if you've got something that can hit that four times weakness, then it's going to go down. Yeah. Um, whereas Espeon, you've got you got to prepare some something else for it. You've got to bring your ghost moves or your dark moves, or you know you can't just throw a toxic on it and it'll go down because it'll just bounce it right back. So yeah. Yeah. Very true. And with the high offensive pressure, I doubt anyone would want to try to toxic stall it as well. Exactly right. Yeah, you're better off trying to just like the other, you know, physical, or the other, sorry, offensive evolutions like Leafy on. You just got to get in and start attacking it because before you know it, it'll, you know, lose your HP before you blink. <laughs> yeah. And especially yeah. Uh, with SP on, you'd want to hit it on its uh, defensive side. Since it's special right. special defense, it's so naturally high. That's right. But all right. Um, it, any uh thing you want to add to this, Stuart? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I definitely I like your two trades. Uh, I'm interested in the Nido Kings one. I'll look forward to seeing what he does with it. Love the right two trade. I think it's the best one. And right on the Espeon, another good upgrade. Um. It'll be exciting to see how week one goes and whether or not anyone makes any further trades going forward. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll sum it up for our week one free agent trades, moves and trades, and we'll just have to see how week one racks up now with all these changes that just happened. And be prepared to watch that next weekend, guys. That's right. Good luck to everyone. See you guys next time. Ciao.